Hello, I'm Pastor Dave, and this is our next session in our study of Methodist doctrine. This week, we're looking specifically at doctrines about judgment and eternal life. And I promise, unlike this past week, this one will be a bit shorter. But let's start, as always, with an opening question. What is God's judgment? Take a few moments to think about that. This is one of those questions that can make people uncomfortable because it's not something we often focus on in the church or even in general. We tend not to want to focus on judgment or even what is sin or not sin. But this is something that comes up in some of the Bible studies I teach, especially the ones on the Old Testament. Because oftentimes the prophets are pronouncing God's judgment against the people. And it's not always something easy to deal with, but one thing that repeatedly comes up is that this isn't random, it doesn't happen by chance. The judgment always comes in response to the actions of people. There's never any malice on God's part. And really that should be our starting point when we think about judgment, is that judgment is a divine response to human actions on earth. It's never something that isn't in response to what we've already done. And going from there into what is our doctrine of our denomination and Methodism in general, this is what we really need to talk about. And to start with this, we can look at the Articles of Religion, specifically Article 3, which really does tell us that judgment is coming. This is what Article 3 called of the resurrection of Christ states. Christ did truly rise again from the dead and took again his body. With all things appertaining to the perfection of man's nature, wherewith he ascended into heaven, and here's the key part, and there sitteth until he returned to judge all men at the last day. It is that last part that is important because it does tell us that judgment is coming. And this is reinforced when we look at the historic creeds of the church, especially the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, both of which clearly state that God will judge the living and the dead. This is a classic Christian doctrine. This is part of the faith and has always been part of the faith and always will be part of our faith. Now, from this point, we do need to think about what will be what will we be judged on? And if we believe John Wesley, in his opinion, we will be judged on every thought, word, and deed of our lives. That seems like a stark standard because pretty much every single one of us at some point has had a bad thought or said something bad or did something bad. But really, when we look at, yes, this is a judgment, we all fall short, our hope is not dependent on our own actions, but instead we are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. And really, because of that justification by Christ, because of our faith, there is nothing to fear in judgment. As negative as we sometimes see this, there is nothing to fear if we hold our faith in Jesus Christ. So that's that first part. But now there's that other part that we're going to look at this evening. And really, that is what leads to this question. What is eternal life? We'll be honest that eternal life can have many connotations, especially in this world, especially when we talk to each other. And really, the consensus isn't just one thing. If we look to the Apostles' Creed, we see the phrase life everlasting. If we look at the Nicene Creed, we see life of the world to come. John Wesley took it a different way where his understanding of eternal life is eternal happiness. 
all of these really come up of trying to describe what is truly indescribable of what is to come as the reward of faith. Life eternal with God, and how do you completely describe that? It really goes beyond human description. Whether we call it heaven, whether we call it paradise, everlasting life, the world to come, eternal happiness, the new Jerusalem, it is something that goes beyond what we can say and describe effectively. But one thing that comes up with this is on the doctrine of purgatory. Now, purgatory is a medieval Catholic doctrine, which was one of the things that the Protestant Reformation rejected because of its lack of basis in Scripture. This is what Article 14 of our Articles of Faith states in this paragraph entitled Of Purgatory. The Romish doctrine concerning purgatory, pardon, worshipping, and adoration, as well as images as of relics, and also in invocation of saints, is a fond thing, vainly invented and grounded upon no warrant of Scripture, but repugnant to the words of God, or the Word of God. Now, generally speaking, we've walked this back. We haven't changed our articles of religion, but we do understand within the ecumenical context, basically calling doctrine of another Christian denomination repugnant to the word of God doesn't bode well. And the sad thing is we don't really speak much of this. One thing we can see from that article is the fact that, you know, they are something fond. They are something good. We like to do that. But we are struggling with the idea of calling upon, or basically things that aren't based in Scripture. Now, what's interesting is John Wesley personally believed that there was an intermediate state between death and final judgment, where those who did not believe would be aware of what is to come, and those who did believe would enjoy paradise. But doctrinally... Our denomination and Methodism as a whole rejects that idea of purgatory. And officially, we're kind of silent on what happens between death and judgment. I have my own personal thoughts, as Wesley has, as everyone else does, but that takes us beyond the scope of what we're trying to do in these videos. But this does lead us to ask, what about God's kingdom? The Nicene Creed states that God's kingdom will have no end. And Wesley's understanding is really found in one of his sermons entitled The New Creation, which states a belief in a new creation which would involve the redemption and the healing of the entire universe. But in the end, all of this really comes down to the hope that we have because it's the hope we get based on our faith in Jesus Christ to not be concerned about the judgment or the specifics of what is to come, but to look forward to God's never-ending kingdom and really everything as God truly intends it to be. That's all I have for you this week. I said it would be a shorter week this week. And after last week's, we kind of deserve a short one. Now, if you want to go further... You can look up John Wesley's sermon, The Scriptural Way of Salvation, to really grasp the starting point of all of this and what is important for salvation. But next week, we will wrap up our study with our final session, just looking at Methodist doctrine and Methodist ethos. I hope to see you next week.